Peter Mungo Jupp has an interesting article in Thomas Short where he tells that writing in the 18th century, he chronicled the many calamities that decimated mankind over 4,000 years. Wait till you hear this. Plagues, earthquakes, drought, pestilence and incredible floods, as you read through Short's curious book, you're struck by the appearance of bright comets in numbers unmatched by modern experiences. And he writes that comets are invariably connected to major disasters. Up until the 1800s, many sources resonate with the fear that humanity held for the comet. Chinese records show the many forms a comet may take. And did they have a reason to show this? And when the Age of Reason arrived, curiously, the number of visible comets visiting the Earth fell dramatically. And eventually, by the end of the 20th century, it became scientific dogma that comets were nothing more than harmless dusty snowballs. And then, two stunning events occurred that forced a reappraisal of this B9 scenario. Astronomers have witnessed five massive explosions on the planet Jupiter as fragments from the shoemaker Levy collided with the planet. Larger explosions are expected later this week. They called it the biggest explosion in the solar system for hundreds of years. Half an hour after the first comet fragment went in, the impact was still visible. The cloud of debris spread out for thousands of miles and was over a thousand miles high. The astronomers were jubilant. We're going to see things and we're going to learn a lot. That's the good news tonight. In 1994, the comet Shoemaker Levy 9 split into 23 pieces. And one by one, the 23 pieces flashed discharged well above the surface of the giant planet Jupiter. And the results were devastating. Each discharge area was the size of the Earth. With the destructive imprints persisting for well over a year. And this was the first time modern man had been shown how ruthless the innocent comet could be. And the second eye-opener was the observation by modern instruments of comets diving into the sun. Immediately afterwards, giant coronal mass ejections were seen blossoming out of the opposite side of the sun. An electric universe advocate, Wal Thornhill, believes this is an indication that the sun is electrical in nature, pointing to the fact that the resultant coronal mass ejections were even larger than the sun itself. How could such a puny object like a comet be so violently powerful? Wal Thornhill states, we don't really understand comets or their origins, however, new instruments have enabled scientists to question many of their previous notions about comets. First of all, they are not dusty snowballs. Being solid bodies, they are more similar to asteroids than first thought. And as Wal Thornhill explains, the comets are negatively charged and they are racing towards a positively charged sun. And as they get closer, they begin to discharge in what Wolf Thornhill believes is a cold discharge. However, he also notes that early man documented the earliest appearance of a comet, the protoplanet Venus. Hesiod, writing in about 700 BC, notes that it sprang from the head of Jupiter. We may never know the truth behind such notions in our time, however, there is no doubt that Venus was described as a mighty comet. Many ancient chroniclers note the features, such as its beard, that are classically ascribed to cometary bodies. In that mode, it wreaked tremendous damage to the human race. And much of this evidence is presented by the fiercely denigrated Emanuel Velikovsky, who claimed that Venus was once an erratic comet. The chaos described by Velikovsky resulted in electrical discharges between the planetary bodies, including the Earth, Velikovsky cites chapters out of Homer's Iliad as an example of such battles between Venus, Mars 
and other planetary bodies. And whether we concur with Velikovsky's ideas or not, there is no doubt that tremendous upheavals occurred on Earth at these times. Egyptian sources such as the Papyrus Harris testify to these destructive eras. Modern day evidence comes from such archaeologists as Claude Schieffer, who showed that six destruction layers separated civilizations from the Bronze Age down to the Iron Age. Those destructions, he believes, were worldwide and points to the Usolo horizon as overwhelming evidence. These caused earthquakes, famine, plagues and mass migrations of human beings hell-bent on survival. And the sudden and dramatic collapse of the early Bronze Age civilizations has puzzled many an archaeologist. With many highly respected academics pondering over these unexplained phenomena, and the consensus of academic opinion notes that not only was it sudden and dramatic, but it was widespread from Europe across Asia Minor to the Indus Valley civilizations and beyond to China. Further evidence of Velikovsky's destructive scenario comes from archaeologist Amos Noor, who scientifically measured those tumultuous times that were replete with earthquakes, soil deposition, famine, ash deposits, desertification and site abandonment. And the echoes of such cosmic interference continued down through Roman and Greek times. Numerous devastating earthquakes are noted, beginning with Thucydides citing the destruction of Athens by earthquake and plague. If, as Wolf Thornhill believes, earthquakes are an underground electrical storm, then perhaps a comet has the ability to excite the telluric currents beneath the earth. And the appearance of comets and subsequent deadly earthquakes is often touched upon in Thomas Short's Chronicles. Finally, we have come to the evidence provided by the rock carvings known as petroglyphs. The shapes of these carvings, such as the Squatterman figure, resemble plasma physicist Anthony Peratt's plasma tube instabilities in computer simulations, and Anthony Peratt's studies have revolutionised petroglyph interpretation. Since electrical phenomena are scalable, Peratt surmised that they were drawn in by the admiration of huge plasma instabilities in the sky. Precisely what caused those impressive instabilities can only be conjectured for now. Was it Venus? Was it the result of a comet's interference? Was it the result of electrical phenomena that we haven't witnessed in centuries? We can't be sure, but the realisation that electrical effects are cosmically scalable provides a basis for constructing theories that are rooted in fact and not imaginary dusty snowballs.